Physics allow a universe to begin from nothing. You don't need a deity. You have nothing, zero total energy, and quantum fluctuations can produce a universe. In the year 2003, Arvind Bord, Alan Guth, and Alexander Vilenkin were able to prove that any universe, which is on average in a state of expansion throughout its history, cannot be infinite in the past, but must have a past space-time boundary. And what makes their proof so powerful is that it holds regardless of the physical description of the early universe. Because we can't yet provide a physical description of the first split second of the universe, this brief moment has been fertile ground for speculations. But the bohr guth vilenkin theorem is independent of any physical description of that moment. Their theorem implies that the quantum vacuum state out of which our universe may have evolved, which uh, some scientific popularizers have misleadingly characterized as nothing, that state cannot be eternal in the past, but must have had an absolute beginning. In fact, even if our universe is just a tiny part of a much greater multiverse composed of many universes, the bohr guth vilenkin theorem requires that the multiverse itself must have a beginning. And that problem is posed by the inevitable question, why did the universe come into being? What brought the universe into existence? Well, unless you're willing to say that the universe just popped into being uncaused out of absolutely nothing, there must be a transcendent cause beyond space and time which created the universe. Now recently some physicists like Lawrence Krauss have mischaracterized the early quantum vacuum state out of which the universe may have uh, come as being nothing uh, and that therefore they've claimed modern science can explain the origin of the universe out of nothing. This is simply a misrepresentation of those theories and indeed a, a gross distortion of science. The quantum vacuum state is not nothing and it is not eternal in the past. This point was made very forcefully um, by David Albert, a very prominent philosopher of quantum uh, physics, in his review of Krauss's book on March 23rd, 2012, and I want to read you from Albert's review because the, it's so extraordinary what he has to say. He says, according to relativistic quantum field theories, particles are understood as specific arrangements of the fields. Certain arrangements of the fields, for example, correspond to there being 14 particles in the universe. Certain other arrangements correspond to there being no particles at all. And those last arrangements are referred to in the jargon of quantum field theories for obvious reasons as vacuum states. He goes on to say, Krauss seems to think that these vacuum states amount to the relativistic quantum field theoretical version of there being no physical stuff at all. But he says that's just not right. Relativistic quantum field theoretical vacuum states are particular arrangements of elementary physical stuff. The fact that some arrangements of these fields happen to correspond to the existence of particles and some don't is not a whit more mysterious than the fact that some of the possible arrangements of my fingers happen to correspond to the existence of a fist and some don't. And the fact that particles can pop in and out of existence over time as those fields rearrange themselves is not a whit more mysterious than the fact that fists can pop in and out of existence over time as my fingers rearrange themselves. And none of these poppings, he says, amounts to anything even remotely in the neighborhood of a creation from nothing. He concludes, Krauss is dead wrong and his religious and philosophical critics are absolutely right. So we can formulate this reasoning in the form of a simple argument. 
Uh, whatever begins to exist has a cause. The universe began to exist, therefore the universe has a cause. Or alternatively, um, the universe began to exist too. If the universe began to exist, then the universe has a transcendent cause from which it follows, therefore the universe has a transcendent cause. So the cause of the universe must be a being which exists beyond space and time. Now, what could that possibly be? Well, there are only two candidates that I know of that could fit that description. Either an abstract object, like a number or some other mathematical entity, or else an unembodied mind or consciousness. But you see, abstract objects don't stand in causal relations. That's part of what it means to be abstract. The number seven, for example, can't cause anything. It doesn't have any effects on anything. And therefore, it follows logically that the most plausible explanation of the universe is an unembodied mind or a personal creator of the universe. So this argument, I think, gives us very powerful reasons for believing in a transcendent, immaterial, beginningless, uncaused, personal, and enormously powerful creator of the universe. 